Okay, this photo shows uh, most of the major components of the SDS EFI system. So up here we've got the dual fuel pump module. We include Denji K spark plugs. This is the dual ECU, uh, coil pack, throttle body, fuel block, fuel fittings here for the fuel block and injectors, the other coil pack, these are magneto covers and mounts where the coil packs uh, mount to and they also plug the hole for the magnetos. These are the fuel injector bosses here, screw into the cylinder heads. Fuel pump cover for the mechanical pump which isn't needed anymore. Fuel pressure regulator. This is a drilling jig to drill a flywheel for the uh, trigger magnets and we include the drill here and the tap. Mixture knob fuel injectors here, programmer, this is the uh, older style round programmer, fits in a 3 and 1 8 inch instrument hole, and now we have the rectangular programmer, and you'll see that a bit later in the video, the newer one. This is a uh, mount for the uh, air temperature probe, air temperature, and these are the older style. Now we provide two of these smaller 1 8 pipe uh, temperature probes, one for air temp and one for engine temp. Fuel injector lines here, these are braided dash three. And this is a map sensor, we've got two map sensors. These are the injector relays here, that switch uh, injector function over from one ECU to the other. And here we've got the spark plug adapters and spark plug adapter washers. We don't show the uh, wiring harnesses here, they just clog up the picture too much, but they're all included as well. Okay, this chart shows fuel value versus RPM. And uh, fuel value is over here, RPM is over here. And this is kind of a theoretical, kind of typical curve. Um, you'll notice the values don't really increase much, and that's because uh, RPM determines the frequency of the number of injections. So as we double the RPM, we double the number of injections, which doubles the amount of fuel anyway. So RPM values just compensate for the changes in volumeric efficiency. And if we want to change the air fuel ratio, say here on this chart, we start bending the values up a little bit to increase uh, the amount of fuel going in. So we make it a little richer, maybe in the 2500 to 2700 range here, which would be takeoff and climb on your average Lycoming engine. But uh, we don't want to see these uh, ramp up like this or something because uh, most engines, the volumeric efficiency doesn't change too much unless they have a lot of camshaft in them. Lycoming engines don't, so the torque curve's pretty flat, and uh, we generally find the RPM fuel values are also fairly flat like this. Okay, this chart here shows the relationship between manifold pressure and fuel value. We've got fuel value here. You'll see these go from zero to 160 on this chart. On the actual SDS, you can program up to uh, 255 and this is manifold pressure here and you can see as the manifold pressure climbs the fuel value gets larger and larger so the computer is adding more and more fuel as we get more and more manifold pressure because there's more and more air flowing into the engine uh, generally speaking we don't touch the manifold pressures too much in aviation applications the default values uh, increase like this in a linear fashion, and that's usually quite close to what's required on the engine. Okay, here's a few fundamentals on the uh, STS fuel injection. Uh, probably one of the most important things you need to know is the RPM fuel value multiplied by the MAP fuel value gives you the uh, injector pulse width, or how long the injector is open and how much fuel is injected. If we take an example here, uh, RPM fuel value is 100, MAP fuel value is 40. If we multiply those together, that gives us 4,000. And this might be at a typical idle uh, 10 inches MAP. Then if we go to the second example here, RPM fuel value is 100 again. But this time the manifold pressure value is uh, 200. And if we multiply those together, it gives us 20,000. And this would give us five times the amount of fuel as we had at idle. And this might represent, uh, say, cruise power. Manifold pressure is quite a bit higher. And a third example, 
This time we've increased the RPM fuel value to 200. The map value is also 200. Multiply that together, give us 40,000. So in this case, this would give us 10 times the amount of fuel we had at idle. This might represent uh, full power, say 2,700 RPM, and we need a lot of fuel there. And the next uh, item here we need to know, as uh, the RPM is doubled, the number of injections are doubled and therefore the fuel flow is double. So the injection frequency is determined by the RPM. Double the RPM, double the frequency, double the amount of fuel. And finally, as the manifold pressure is doubled, the injector pulse width is doubled, and therefore the fuel flow is also doubled. So these things are all an important, uh, have an important relationship to the programming, and uh, you do need to understand this to uh, properly program the system. This is a new Design 1 programmer shown in Gauge 1 mode. This displays manifold pressure, engine temperature, RPM, and air temperature. This is Gauge 2 mode. This shows mixture knob position, accelerator pump function, injector duty cycle, and ignition timing. Gauge 3 mode, battery voltage, throttle position, O2 sensor, AFR, and barometric pressure. Finally, gauge 4 mode, manifold pressure, ignition timing, RPM, and AFR. This is showing RPM fuel, 2400 RPM, and the value is 165. Same 2400 RPM, but now we've increased the value from 165 to 175, adding more fuel. Here's manifold pressure, 20.7 inches, and the fuel value is 92. Manifold pressure, 20.7 inches, and now we've increased the uh, fuel value to 98. Engine temperature is for warm-up enrichment, 109 degrees, the value is 37. We wanted to richen it up, so we increased the value to 41 here. Start parameter controls enrichment during the cranking phase and the first few seconds of running. 70 here. And if we want to make it richer, we just pump this up to 79, which will add more fuel. Okay, we're just going to show the programmer here. We're going to fast scroll using the left arrow button, just holding it down. And you can see all the parameters will uh, loop through from the left and it'll come back around to gauge one mode again. So there's approximately 300 parameters you can access with the SDS. This gives you very fine control of all facets of the uh, operating map. And we're just going to show you how to increase the RPM fuel value at 1900 RPM. We're just using the plus button to uh, make that value larger. Arrow button to go to 2000 RPM. Plus button again to increase it to 170 at 2000. Here we've got the manifold pressure fuel at 22.4 inches. We're going to increase it from 104 to 108 by using the plus button again. We're going to move to 22 inches, 103. We're going to decrease that using the minus button to 99. So what we end up with after all this programming is a fuel map, and that's shown here. Uh, on the left here is RPM fuel, starting at 500 RPM, and in this case going to uh, 4,500 RPM. And you'll see the values are very flat here from 500 right to 2,500, 
and then uh, it's richened up considerably 2600 2700 in this case next we have the manifold pressure values and there's uh, 64 of these stretching from uh, very low manifold pressure about 3.7 inches up to 31 inches and uh, these values down here are defaults in case the map sensor fails it, the computer will fuel for uh, pretty high power and the rest of these values start out uh, fairly progressively and this is the idle range around here you'll see these values are the same this is about where this engine idles and the values uh, generally step up at about two per location so this is the uh, linear progression I was talking about earlier in the video and at uh, high manifold pressure we get up to about 140 these are the engine temperature values here and these uh, start out uh, basically we'll start out at the cold end here these are uh, defaults both at engine temperature and start this is again in case the temperature sensor fails it won't put in any extra fuel otherwise it might think it's minus 58 degrees and would pour in a lot of extra fuel and uh, this uh, parameter here is basically controlling the amount of enrichment after the engine starts so very cold temperatures you can see the values are quite large here they're putting in a lot of extra fuel and as the engine warms up less and less fuel and when we get to 176 degrees CHT the computer is not adding any more fuel for enrichment. These are the start values. There's uh, 32 of these and also 32 of the engine temp values. Again, this is quite similar. The start parameter just controls enrichment during uh, the first uh, few seconds of cranking and running, and then the computer reverts over to the engine temperature values. So these look kind of similar. Very cold temperatures, we have to put in a lot of fuel to get it started. and uh, the engine was warmer it's not putting in much fuel here next we have rpm ignition uh, these uh, duplicates of the rpm fuel over here so it starts out at 500 basically goes up by uh, 100 rpm increments so we have five degrees here at 500 rpm this is mainly for cranking once the engine's idling this engine uh, is running about 15 degrees and the ignition timing is slowly stepped up as RPM is stepped up. We reach uh, 24 degrees at 1500 here. And we just run 24 on this engine all the way to 2700. This is uh, ignition retard advance with load, basically manifold pressure. So we can uh, add or subtract more timing based on manifold pressure. And uh, you can see here, these are all set at zero. Um, by changing this value here, say at this manifold pressure, 6 inches, we could retard or advance the timing as many degrees as we want. We just enter, you know, a 2 here. That would uh, retard the timing. And uh, ignition timing is a composite of the RPM ignition timing plus or minus the uh, ignition retard advance. It would be uh, with an advance uh, figure put in here it would add timing to this say at uh, say 2500 rpm 24 degrees if we put in uh, two degrees advanced when the computers uh, say here at uh, we'll say 20.3 inches would add two more degrees so it would end up to be 26 degrees and we could also retard it at high manifold pressures if we wanted to to avoid detonation we could enter uh, some values here, two or three degrees, and that would pull the timing back from here. So if we had 24 and we took out two degrees at high manifold pressure, you'd end up at, with 22 degrees. These are the air temperature corrections. These are normally hidden in the programmer. We don't normally touch these. They're kind of a, a mathematical progression. They're hidden. There is a way to unhide them and program them, but generally speaking, we don't touch these. And uh, We've got start cycles here, which we showed you earlier. This controls uh, how long this, the uh, start enrichment lasts for. So these will time out after a few seconds, and then the computer will revert to the engine temperature values here for the rest of the warm-up cycle. Here we've got uh, accelerator pump. 
this is for throttle response and uh, this one here sensitivity is for how sensitive the throttle position sensor is to movement we've got lots of other things here probably won't go into in this video we got closed loop settings uh, rpm fuel cuts map fuel cuts uh, many many other things here but uh, won't go into them on this video there's too many things to go over and just uh, make your eyes glaze over so that's about it uh, for this video and uh, this is a map that's printed from the computer using the data logging file so this prints a complete map of whatever you've got programmed in the computer anyway hopefully uh, you found this uh, interesting again and uh, maybe it's pose posing more questions in your mind if you got more questions uh, make a comment and maybe I can answer them in, in a subsequent video here thank you very much for watching